Of course, yeah. Huh? What? Of course, yeah. That's that's sad. Well, let's wait till she has babies, okay? Then she's gonna beat me. Okay. Uh, let's take uh, the the page with. Okay. Question by question. I'm not gonna teach you the entire lesson in fifteen entire course in fifteen minutes again. What I expect you expect you to know. Number one. What does phycology study? And you pick the answer. So know the microorganism, know the branch. Know microorganisms in terms of multi-unicellular, uh, nucleus, no nucleus. Is that clear? Good. Role and importance in nature, industry, and healthcare. Understand nature well, all right, decomposition, you know, ruminant, the, the, the cow's stomach and stuff like that. Pretty simple, okay? Mostly we talked about decomposition. Um, industry. I have a food fixation, so bread, cheese, beer, wine, stuff like that. Drugs. We make drugs using fungi, for example. Healthcare. What I mean by healthcare? Hospital-acquired infections. And please... Be able to tell the disease that can be caused by microbes from the one that cannot. Believe me, I'm going to be very distinctive. You won't have to pick one that, you know, like out of the list of urinary tract disease, digestive disease, diseases of CNS, you know, throw in something else, skin diseases. They all can be caused by microbes. Fractures generally are not caused by microbes. Okay, so if you see fracture, it's not a freaking infectious disease. Although some, well, things like diabetes, we have no, no, no proof that, no evidence that it caused. I made a case for it. No evidence that it can be associated with infection. Okay? Um... Whitaker and Wheezy Fox. Five Kingdoms. I'm waiting. Five Kingdoms. Animals, plants, fungi. Protests and Monera. Five. Know them. Uh, classification is based on protests. Okay, uh, classification is based on evolutionary proximity, yes. Um, Wizzy Fox, three domains. Archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. The relationship is, which one is closer? Archaea and eukarya closer to each other. Know this relationship. That's what I mean here. Okay. Um, what What is it based on? Genetic makeup. Genetic similarities. 16S or ribosomal RNA. Number four. Toward naming system for microbes. Let me just skip this question, okay? Everybody. First one is genus. Second one is species. Right? Pretty, pretty clear. You're going to have a questions about this. You'll have to decide. Okay. Major milestones of microbiology. I'm skipping this one too because I refer you to the slide with the table. Uh, you don't have to... I won't ask you to write me the entire table by heart, but I might ask you the contribution of Joseph Lister to the field of microbiology is you have four very distinctive answers you pick one okay or such and such guy made the following contribution his name is you pick one does that make sense I suggest 
you'll quickly write flashcards but the time by the time you're done with flashcards you will know all that stuff you will know enough to recognize it okay structure of the water molecule um, it's a polar molecule hydrogen bonds formed between positively positive partially positive hydrogens partially negative oxygens the role of hydrogen bonds in biological macromolecules is you have DNA strands held together by hydrogen bonds hydrogen bonds determine the structure of the protein and blah blah and think about this everything in nature exists in water so hydrogen bonds determine that shit okay pH scale 7 neutral more than 7 basic below 7 acidic you don't have to know the pH of coca-cola or tomato juice by the way pH of coca-cola is 2.5 lower than your stomach slightly just a tad actually um, if you have on the car battery those things that are attached if they rusty just get some coke yeah pour it over huh say again oh I found the use for it um, I like coca-cola but I feel really sick after it. It's a problem. I really like the taste. It's addictive. Um, so basic structure and function. Okay, biological macromolecules. There are certain things that can be just described in common. For each, know the structure and the function. Okay, when I say structure, it means for carbohydrates, they're made of monosaccharides. They are either monosaccharides or made of you know polysaccharides are made of monosaccharides proteins made of amino acids DNA RNA of nucleotides um, that consist of bless you nitrogenous base sugar residue and phosphate and with fats it's slightly more complex remember triglycerides glycerol fatty acids phospholipids phosphate glycerol fatty acids and then we have separate thing hopanoids and sterols so know the structure have an idea about structure you will not have to picture it don't worry okay but don't try to convince me that proteins are made of nucleotides something like that okay um, function nucleic acids genetic information uh, carbohydrates energy and structural proteins structural and regulatory enzymes and stuff lipids different triglycerides energy phospholipids membranes hopanoids and sterols regulate the structure of the membranes hopanoids in prokaryotes sterols in eukaryotes it's kind of a quick wrap up understand the role of dehydration reaction as reaction of synthesis and hydrolysis as the background clear if I'm going too fast let me know yes thank you okay that clear dehydration and hydrolysis role in dehydration and synthesis hydrolysis in the breakdown it's really important does that make sense it's pretty much a summary of those like four four slides I think so that summarizes these guys okay this four questions seven eight nine ten eleven What is geno what is genotype? All the genes in the body, all the genes in the in a genome, that's genotype. What's the phenotype? The appearance, yes. So expression. Does the sequence determine phenotype? Or expression? Expression of the genes determine the phenotype. Remember that. We all have 
almost identical genotypes, but very different phenotypes because of the different expression. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, this statement, no, 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 not this one. This one. Explain the concept and blah, blah, blah. Um, not really proud of that phrase. It's just too complicated. Pretty much the idea is that phenotype, expression of the genes, is determined by the selective pressure of the environment. We can't really see it well in humans because we live too long, but in bacteria we can definitely see the selection. Does that make sense? Right. So that, that's, that's like the first chapter of the unit. Microscopy. Understand how it works. Reflection and refraction of light as physical principles. Know the difference between magnification, resolution, and contrast. Know what limits the capacities of light microscopy. What limits the capacity? Which physical parameter? Why light microscopy can be used for objects only 0.2 uh, micrometers and, and bigger? What limits? Size. Huh? Uh, well, why size is limited? Not really. Well, why can't we see that small? Of what? Again, of refraction of what you just said of light which physical parameter of light limits the resolution not really well what limits the resolution why can't we see something that size of an atom why Nope, we can't. We have, but it's not going to be a light microscope. Why? What determines the range that we can see in? <laughs> Which spectrum? What it reflects? Which physical parameter of light? Like from here to here? Frequency, wavelength, finally, okay? Wavelength or frequency, doesn't matter. I'm not going to ask. You're not going to have to choose between them. It's either freak, they kind of inverse, right? So that's why if something is much smaller than the wavelength, we can't see it. Even comparable, that's why we can't see mycoplasma. It's like 0.2. It's really tough to see at that wavelength. Okay? So that's major uh, limitation. Uh, parts of the microscope. Look, they're all self-explanatory. They function. I want to remind you about two. Condenser that focuses the light on the specimen and iris that regulates the amount of light that gets on the specimen. Honestly, everything else is kind of the answer is in the question okay a condenser condenser and iris two things I just remind you because they're not that obvious everything else is very up question regulates the amount of light think about human iris regulates the amount of light yes diaphragm yeah same thing as diaphragm yes um, major types of light and electron microscopy and their applications. There's a, there are three like tables, or four maybe. For electron, there are two types that we talked about, transmission and scanning. And I highlighted the exact differences, I don't know how many times. Know them, those differences, right? Outside in scanning versus the inside structure of the specimen in transmission. For light microscopy, all those things that we talked about, you won't have to list them, but you will have questions. For instance, description, 
of the microscopy, description of what it does, what type is that? Or uh, phase contrast microscopy allows you to get high contrast images of live specimen using light interference. Okay? Again, it's association. I, I refer you to those tables because I just don't want to recite them again. But that's what I expect you to know. Not listing. You're not going to have a question. List five types of light microscopy. God forbid, no. Why do we fix the sample? So it doesn't run away. So it doesn't move. Why do we stain the sample? So we can see it better. What, which parameter do we increase? How can we see it better? Why? No, we doesn't change. No, we doesn't change the resolution. We can't. It would be lovely, but no. If it's not resolution, contrast. We increase contrast. How do we? By the way, how do we calculate magnification? We multiply something by something. Eyepiece by objective lens. Magnification of eyepiece. Magnified by, multiplied by magnification of objective lines. Okay. Staining. <clears throat> applications. You have to know applications. Staining, simple versus differential. Simple, positive, negative. Differential, types of differential staining that I want you to know. Gram, acid fast, endospore flagellar, and capsular. Endospore, flagellar, and capsular is cheating because what they do is in the names. Okay? Steps in the culturing. Inocu inoculation. What's the next after inoculation? Incubation. Isolation. Identification, inspection, I usually put them together, right? So, in terms of inoculation, good that um, we had this insight into that confusing question about inoculation. I will know not to put answer like that. I, do, I want to avoid the confusion. No, like, requirements, like sterile collection of a sample and stuff like that. Medium. No classification. So understand what inoculation is, okay? The process of putting the sample into the medium. Medium, live versus not live. Physical state, know the difference between liquid, solid, semi-solid. Chemical composition, defined versus complex. And functionally, we talked about General purpose enriched, uh, differential, selective, and I think that's it. Yeah, those. I think those four types. Okay. So what you can get, the question like, I give you a description of a medium, actual medium, not hypothetical, actual medium, and tell you based on the, that information, Medium can be described as, you pick one, or more than one. Make sense? Good. Uh, why do we incubate? Why controlled environment? Let's recite again. Only one variable. Right, so to remove the variables, right? So we can compare results in different labs, or we can compare different experiments in the same lab. Does that make sense? So results can be replicated and compared. We good on that? Okay.
replication. Streak poor spread plate. Um, if I describe you a technique, recognize it. Question? It's okay. I describe you a technique, be able to recognize the technique. That's it. Um, oh, the culture. Understand the difference between pure, mixed, and contaminated. Just know the difference between three types of culture. Uh, basic level, major methods of microbial identification. So this is the list. Logical, biochemical, genetic. Remember we talked about Western blood, ELISA, immunofluorescence, chromatography and mass spectrometry, PCR and sequencing. So there were seven methods. For those methods, you have to recognize the description. So if I tell you this method detects a unique fragment of the microbial DNA using primers, you pick answer PCR. You also have to be able to shortly describe advantages and disadvantages of the methods. Okay? That, this, is, this, is, this may be a thinking question, like an essay question. Okay? Describe this, describe that. Think about what are the benefits, whether you get too much information or too little, whether you look for everything that's in the mixture or you look for a specific thing, okay? Like when you search for the keys, you're not going to find your wallet because you don't look for the wallet. Um, spontaneous generation. Uh, know the ready experiment with the covered meat and Pasteur experiment with a flask with that fancy, fancy neck, okay? Um, pretty much know those guys that just proved it, it kind of it kind of comes together with that milestones like roll of zimmel waste hand wash and infectious nature of perpetual fever roll of lister and um, sterile surgical techniques cork and his postulates pasteur and his uh, germ theory of disease Endosymbiosis. Which two organelles are a result of endosymbiosis? Mitochondria, chloroplast. How do we know? They can not completely independently, but you can take them out of the cell and replicate like an egg, which is different cell. They replicate on their own. They have their own DNA, which is different from nuclear DNA. Right? Major shapes of bacterial cells. I refer you to the table where we talk about spherical cocci, rod-shaped bacilli, curved rod-shaped vibrios, um, something in between the bacillus and coccus, coccobacilli, and spiral spirochetes and spirillum. Supracellular structures. What I mean by that sounds very fancy. Two cocci, diplococcus. Four cocci, like in a square, tetrad. Chain of cocci, streptococcus. A bunch of cocci, staphylococcus. Chain of bacilli, streptobacilli. Right? I will ask you about the shape, I promise. Osmosis, movement of towards low concentration of huh? high concentration of salt which is low concentration of water remember that if you place cell in the hyper so know what happens to the cell if it's in the hypertonic or hypotonic environment what determines whether the environment is hyper iso or hypotonic Amount of salt where? Inside of the cell? 
only? Well, actually both, right? Because if microbe has very low concentration of solutes inside, then very low concentration of solutes on the outside will be isotonic for it. Does that make sense? It's when the the constant the osmolalities are equal inside and outside. That's isotonic. Doesn't matter how much salt there is. Remember we talked about how microbes can survive in a salty environment? High salt outside, but high salt inside. Clear? Maintenance of shape that cell kind of swells because it's in a hypotonic environment pretty much all the time. So water moves into the cell. Major cell structures and their functions. Uh, four structures that present in all bacterial cells. Uh, cell membrane, ribosomes, mm -mm. cytoplasm, nucleoid. Okay? Know this four by heart. Okay? Cell membrane, ribosome, cytoplasm, nucleoid. Everything else may or may not be there. Know the structures that we talked about. Things like inclusions, endospores, um, glycocalyx, fimbriae, pili, um, flagella, capsule versus slime layer. What, what are the functions? Most importantly, what are the functions of those cell parts? Okay. Also, can they serve as the virulence factor? How? How can they increase the virulence? Okay. If you get the question, how can um, capsule increase the virulence of the microbe? You have to think about the function. If it protects from the immune response, obviously microbe will be more deadly. Does that make sense? Huh? Okay, so think about how a certain structure can contribute to the virulence. How can it be a virulence factor, like a, like a capsule or a slime layer? Okay, if it protects, if capsule protects microbe from phagocytosis, microbe becomes deadlier, right? We will talk about Griffith experiment um, in the next unit. How he compared two different strains. I, I keep forgetting. I think it was Streptococcus. I think it. So one strain of Streptococcus had capsule, one didn't. The one that had capsule killed the mice. The one that didn't have capsule didn't kill the mice. So you can see capsule is a virulence factor. Does that make sense? Be able to explain how it contributes. Uh, membrane, of course, you know, transport. Be able to tell apart diffusion. Active transport, facilitated versus simple diffusion. Okay. Know the difference between them. Know the structure of the membrane. Phospholipid bilayer. Okay. Um, cell wall. What we talked about today. <clears throat> so know the structure of the cell wall layers. Um, what the unique molecules like tequic acid in gram positive or LPS in gram negatives. Mycolic acid in mycobacteria, in the acid fast bacteria, okay? The unique structures that are unique. Does that make sense? And movement, bacterial movement, um, chemotaxis. Run and tumble concept of moving. Okay? Any questions?